all, if the level of noise like up here was because of the ones that got a lot of sleep. How many of you, you stayed up to welcome the new year? Oh, you did? All right. How many of you had no choice because some of uh, the neighbors were shooting off fireworks? <laughs> that what it was? So, that did so that did that happen? How many did that happen in your neighborhood, right? Okay. Or did you get out there with your fireworks, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, they kept doing it. We show them the Second Amendment ones, right? You know, go up in the air. <laughs> no, I'm only, I'm only teasing. But anyway, so uh, I didn't plan on, you know, welcome the New Year in. But man, when I got home last night, I was hungry. <laughs> How many did that happen to you? And so then you go to bed with a full stomach. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so. You no, know, and if you don't eat, yeah. you'll get up at four and have cereal. So that's a Yeah, thing. you know, so. Oh, yeah, you anyway, so. so our three German shepherds, they were like, what are you guys doing, you know, so. But it's going to be a, a great service. Well, thank you for coming this morning. How many were here last night? Oh, wow, I'm so proud of you. All right, my eyes are going to be on you to make sure you're not going to fall asleep on me now, so I want to make sure we do that. You know, it's so funny. We were driving into church service last night. And uh, by the way, that won't be for another seven years. Do you know that? Where uh, Saturday, night. Saturday night. Isn't that crazy? So next year, it'll be on Sunday night. So I have two services in the morning and Sunday night. So, yeah, Make that's good. Make a day of it. So, but anyway, we were driving to the service, and I noticed that the streets were just like jam-packed. How many of you got that? And so this morning, I'm like, there's nobody the else. You know, so they're all hung over. They're still sleeping. All right, I'm glad that I don't live that way. Aren't you glad, aren't you glad that you're 2020 free? You, you know, you don't, you're not bound by that. Well, listen, I want to greet those of you that are also watching. Thank you so much wherever you're watching. For many of you, you're watching around the world. You're overseas, and so you've already kind of been in the future. Well, we're trying to catch up to you. But uh, I've got a great word. I'm going to continue talking about uh, 2023. And what God is saying about his goodness, and that's really what I want you to, to get a hold of inside of your heart. But before uh, we worship, I want to show you this. How many of you remember Jonathan? He came here for Christmas. And John, I know you're watching this morning. We love you. It was so great to see you. So Since nobody got to see him. Yeah. By the way, all the heaters are fixed. Yeah. So obviously yeah. you know that. But. He, he, we would have greeted everyone. He would have been here. So he's sporting a new look, and he doesn't even know. John, you don't even know that I'm going to show this picture. Look at that. Look at that cowboy. So this is him, Jonathan, with, he has a special relationship with our, our male German shepherd. He's about a 100-pound German shepherd. Johnny and him is always, we're really always connected, you know. Matt connects with the dogs as well. But he just had a special bond, and I think he was just really, you know, they're spending a lot of time together. And so, John, I caught that picture, and um, I just thought that was really, really a good picture of you. I love that cowboy hat. You may... John, you look like a real dude. I'm serious, <laughs> man. And so, but that I was just, just before he, he drove back. I, I just wanted to say this to you, son. You know, it was so great to have you at Christmas, but and I'm gonna cry. I just when I looked at the picture today, it just made me miss you, and I love you, and I'm proud of you. So, I just wanted to celebrate you as well. Okay. All right. Sorry, Brenda. I didn't mean to do that. So. Anyway, okay. it's a new year. A new How many year. of you are so thankful for everything that God is doing and is going to do in this year? Are you ready to praise God this morning? All right, come on, let's throw those hands up. Say these words. Say, Lord, it's a new year. I'm excited because this year, this whole year, is going to be surrounded. Come on, just as a prophetic act, it's surrounded, surrounded by, your goodness. by your goodness, and I want to thank you for it. Come on, let's shout. It. Come on, give him a brand new year shout, and let's praise the Lord this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We've entered into 2023, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, God. So we rejoice in your freedom. We rejoice in how you are setting us free from a harsh season that we've been in, that has been upon the earth, that has been upon the nation, that even has tried to 
suppress and push in upon our lives. And so, God, we come to you in this hour that you have declared that 2023 is the year of freedom. For you're bringing us out to bring us in. And we stand here in this moment to acknowledge that our trust is not in horses, not in military might or power or government, but our trust is in you, the Almighty God, who uses government, who uses people and vessels in the earth to carry out your plan and your purposes in the earth. But yet we stand and we look to you at this time that we would be divinely led by your spirit this year and that the spirit of truth would arrest our hearts and cause our minds to be protected. That Lord, we will not be deceived in this time for your spirit, the spirit of liberty and truth shall guard our hearts and our minds in and by Christ Jesus. And so it would be, says the Spirit of God, that as you look at what was 2022, for there is a two and a two, 22, and so that's what the year seemed to represent in the earth. For I speak of this former season so that you may understand what is taking place and what will be the future years. God said it was a two and a two because it seemed as though that it was a balance. And it was as though your nation, United States, was divided. But now I say, you are in 2023. Notice it is no longer balanced. Notice the God of just weights and the God of fair balances and scales. For anything less is an abomination to me. And so I show you a sign in 2023 that things will begin to tip now. The scales will begin to turn. The scales will begin to go towards the way of righteousness and of justice as the living God. And this you will see as things will continue to unwind and unravel, as there will be more and more exposures that shall come through a shaking of your media, a shaking of your social media and the media of your networks. God says, I will show you what they covered. I will show you the lies that they were paid for to propagate and to bring forth so that you would believe the lies that you have had to swallow. God says you will now stand in the scales of truth, the scales of justice, and you will now see and know what I know, what I have seen, and what is and what was done in secret shall now be shouted and made known, God says, as the scales will turn. Returning towards my hand, people have said, God, where are you? How much longer? God said, I took you out of a year of 2-2, two, two, what seemed even, even as it was when the magicians seemed to emulate what I sent with my servants Moses. It seemed as though things that were prophesied, seems that were decreed, it seems like they were being matched or the enemy was having the upper hand. But God says, now watch. It's shifting, and it will shift two, three. It shall be greater. It shall be greater, because my hand of involvement is, is in the midst. And watch what I do with your executive office. Watch what I do with your legislative office and branches. Watch what I do, God says, with your judicial branches of government. Watch how I tip the scales. The Lord says, watch how I reset. Watch how I reestablish and bring restoration unto your nation, United States. Therefore, I will shake your Senate. And as there is three in your year, there shall be three swift moves that shall come through your Senate. And God says there will come a great exposure of one that I will show, and there is another that aided them. 
in things that will follow them and now expose them. And watch what will happen in your Senate to tip the scales. Watch what will begin to take place as others begin to shift from the left to the middle, the left to the right. And God says, I will show you that they will not have their agenda in the land. And watch what I do to the house of cards. For God says, you think that your house stands as it is. God says, it is a house of cards and it will crumble. You watch what I do to shake it even more. You watch what I do on your Supreme Court. You think that they sit there for even, God says, for length of years yet? You think that they shall even some grow old? Watch what I do to say there are some who are sitting seated upon your Supreme Court unjustly. It is a false balance, a false weight, and I will shake it, says the Spirit of God. And the weight and the unfair treatment of the innocent has gone on long enough and God says no I will not allow an economy to cripple you no I will not allow them to continue to treat you like you are animals and herd you to the slaughter of ignorance and the slaughter of mandates not again for this will be what I will change and tip the scales for a freedom shall fill your 2023 that shall spill over in the coming remaining years of this decade. And watch what I do for the children, for the unjust, the injustice that has been done to the children. I will march those who are guilty, those who have paraded children by way of perversion and transgender. God says uh, absolute bondage. I will shift this too. And there will be laws. Pay attention to Florida, for they will pave away in many of what I speak. For they will say, we will not allow this with children in our state. We will not allow this on the internet. We will not allow this on the television in our state. And God says, you say, oh, that's crazy. Watch! For in Florida, you have the keys for a purpose. Because you don't just have it. In the natural, you have it to unlock over this land. And there will come laws that will protect the children because the scales of justice and righteousness are in my hands, God says. Come on, lift up your hands to the Lord. We worship you, we honor you. What a word to us today. Now, over your life, Come on, if things have been out of balance, how many of you feel like you've been taking one hit after another? I prophesy to your life and those of you that are watching, no more of this. No more is the enemy going to tip the scales in your life and try to make you live under the bondage of depression, anxiety, fear, disease, sickness. No! I say it tips now in favor of your covenant that you have with Almighty God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I decree over your life in your 23 that you are free from sickness. You are free from disease. You are free from tragedies, calamities, accidents, and injuries. You're free from surgeries and medical procedures and hospital stays. And you'll not be held in the jaws of the enemy or jaws of witchcraft or divination. For the powers of witchcraft and every curse of darkness, I declare the fire of the Holy Ghost burns it and destroys it and I say there is the crowning of your year with goodness and with the crowning is a surrounding of a shield of preservation that I prophesy over you and over your year let it be so let it be upon you let it be for you in the office in which I stand given by Jesus himself I speak this into manifestation now Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just say, I receive your blessing. Come on, just do this around your life right now. Say, I am crowned. I am surrounded and preserved by his anointing of goodness and preservation. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Even our nation, even the nations of the earth, 
are being preserved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can I tell you another thing about 2023 I just heard right now? Regarding the Bible says that an unjust weight or an unjust scales is an abomination to the Lord. It means it's a stench. And I just heard the Lord say part of what is happening this year is how many know the foundation of God's very throne is righteousness and justice. And so, can I tell you, the Supreme Court and all these people, everything that's happening right now is about to get a taste of the court of heaven. Where God rules. God has his say. And watch how the Lord will start bringing names before the court of heaven. Father, vindicate Kerry Lake and that election now. Vindicate 45 now. Vindicate those, Father. In the name of Yeshua. See, you gotta, this is where, can I tell you something real quick? I'm gonna teach you something real quick. Listen to me. I would not in a million years ever touch someone who has a true prophetic anointing on their life. You know why? Because when you point the finger at them and you call them false and you accuse them, what you have just done, that's why God says don't touch them, don't do any harm. Because when you do, you bring the court of heaven to your life. And God then holds you accountable for the very things that you judge. And when prophets stand before you and they say something, what you heard last night, what you heard just now, this isn't a joke. Okay, you insult God when you do that. I get very touchy when people say stuff because I understand the price that you have to pay to take his heart and give it a voice. Now listen, when a prophet speaks, especially if they're anointed to speak to governments or over governments, they will bring the court of heaven. When, when David, a king, a governmental figure, committed adultery it was a prophet that came and brought the court of heaven to him and said David let me tell you a story about a man and David said do away with this man and God immediately through the prophet brought the court of heaven to try David in the courts of almighty God when God is speaking what he's speaking about 2023 when he's speaking about Exposures. Do you understand that these that you think are getting by with what they've done, they're not because the prophets are being released to speak. What does that mean? It means they're bringing the court of heaven where now God is mandated to judge it. And this is why. No, 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 don't misunderstand 2023. It's not that everything's going to be fixed. It's in process. But here's what you will see. You will see what the widow said in Luke 18. We will be avenged speedily, quickly accelerated from the hand of our adversaries. Because there is a shift where God is turning this thing around. How many of you believe that? So you have to walk the process. Amen? You know, I felt really bad the other day. I was talking to Pastor Dan. I'll just say this. I'll teach you something real quick. We got to do communion. But, you know, the Lord prophesied about feet of snow. And have you seen how much feet? I mean, they're, they're saying we've never seen it like this before. Well, you know, people lost their lives. And, and, and it hurts me because I take no joy in that. I don't take any joy prophesying about things that innocent people and so I said, Pastor Gene, it makes me not even want to open my mouth because innocent people. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God said to me, he said, what are you saying? And I said, Lord, I feel bad. I don't want to say things. And he said, how do you think Elijah felt when he prophesied a famine and innocent people died? And I never thought of that. 
He said, but I reset a nation and brought judgment to a wicked kingdom because he stood and said what I told him to speak. Are you listening? All right. Well, why don't you do, man, the anointing is still, I, I'm just like, we. Pay, I don't know what next year is going to be. If we have two morning services and a night service, I'm like, oh my gosh, the anointing is just dripping. How many of you feel it? Man, my body is just shaking. Hallelujah. Well, let's get ready for Holy Communion. Let's do that. Let's just go right into that. Ushers, why don't you go ahead and begin to, to serve the people. I'm going to just... Let's just, do you have a song to sing? All right, let's worship God for a moment. Let's just think about this for a minute. Thank you. that hallelujah to the lamb the night of the the Passover the first Passover remember the instruction was go and get a lamb and then the scripture said and then you take the lamb and then you make it your lamb so it went from a uh, to the to your lamb Something happened the night of the Passover that is so amazing that represents what you're about to do and those of you that are watching. The Bible says in Psalm 105, verse 37, that there was not one feeble one among us. You know what that means? Was it one weak? Was it one sick? Was it one, you know, unable to, to make the exodus out of, out of Egypt on the journey that was supposed to take just, you know, a few days, not 40 years? But how... Did the people of Israel, millions and millions of people, great grandparents, grandparents, moms, dads, children's uncles, aunts, sons, daughters, babies, how did God bring about a supernatural 
touch upon a nation and upon a people that there was not one feeble one among them. You know, when did it, when did it happen? It happened when they ate the lamb. That night when they ate the lamb is when they took that lamb into their body. Something began to happen that caused not one feeble, not one sick among them by eating a lamb. It had to be by eating the lamb. Because Jesus said in John 6, He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood, watch this, has my life in them. You know what the God kind of life is? It's the life that Jesus lived on the earth. He was not one time recorded that he was walking around sick. Right? In fact, he was so full of joy that it's what caused him to endure the cross. Imagine how weak his physical body must have been. So I want to encourage you just how powerful if they ate a natural lamb. By the way, that's one of my favorite food. And my wife can make a mean lamb, man. But the point is, this is his body. He didn't say it represents. He said this is. And so just like when they ate that lamb, what's going to happen to your body? to your life when you partake of this that he said this is my body and he said he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has my life in them so let's receive that and when you do I want you to say this say Lord I receive your life I am not feeble there's not one feeble among us my body's healthy it's whole and I live long and strong upon this earth. Amen. The same night he was betrayed, he took of the cup, said, take and drink, for this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. And often as you drink this, you do show the Lord's death. Well, guess what God showed through his death? Showed he had victory over it. Showed he has victory over the devil. And all the rights and all the privileges of your covenant was made possible because of his blood. So I want you to say this. Say, I receive all the rights, all the privileges of my blood covenant through Jesus Christ. I receive it as I partake. How many know you just release that over your life? Forgiveness, healing, deliverance. Come on, soundness of mind, protection, preservation. You can't get better than that, amen? <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Well, why don't you do this? Why don't you stand to your feet for a moment? We're going to move the service along. we have got to preach to you. We've got a lot to do yet. But um, why don't you greet somebody and say this? Say, I bet I know that you're a coffee drinker. And if they are a coffee drinker, kind of figure out what they like. All right. serve the people. And I do want to mention to you, I mean, wow, 2.4, I forget exact amount, 2.4 something. Thank you for making that happen. Thank you also, those of you that are watching around the world, that you helped to make that possible. And uh, words cannot express how grateful Brendan and I are, as well as I, I believe that God is pleased. And that's, that's makes me feel good. How about you? So thank you again for making it happen. And listen, we've got just a few uh, more to go until we get the other one wrapped up and, and we'll just keep moving forward. And then we're going to put all of our focus uh, into the building of the new sanctuary. Won't that be great? You know, and I just kind of was talking to the Lord in my heart as I was trying to get to sleep last night. 
And um, I was just thinking in my heart, wow, you know, would it be possible, God, to have this thing completely done by next year and have the New Year's Eve service there? You know, hey, uh, that's what I'm believing for. So, you know, they're saying probably the first part of 24, but why not? Why not? You know, God, God's a good God. And uh, I'm really, really excited about it. And, and um, you know, can I just share something from my heart about that? You know, I've always, always, you know, looked at, you know, churches and a lot of times the denominational churches or whatever religious churches, you know, they have beautiful buildings. And even among the evangelicals, but there's no power. There's no presence. And, uh, and I used to think, God, what would happen to have a beautiful building and your presence be there? Amen. You know, so I'm really looking forward to that because God's presence is among us. Amen? Amen. He's going to give us a beautiful place for his spirit to dwell in, for you to come and, and all of that. So I'm really, really happy. Hey, I want you to do me a favor also as the ushers are serving you. Uh, I'm going to preach to you here in just a moment. Um, how many of you have uh, gotten a hold of our children's material um, we're trying to create alternatives for the stuff that's out there, and we're working very hard to keep giving uh, families and children good, wholesome material, things that will make them laugh. So they'll just put up Captain Zepto. I did uh, release a new book that I'm not sure that you're aware of yet. It's called Captain Zepto, The Cosmic Inflation. And uh, here's what I want you to do. These books are also out on Amazon. I don't prefer you to purchase them through Amazon. Get them through our ministry so we can put the proceeds back because we're almost uh, really close to getting our uh, first video that's going to be part of the series done. They were hoping to have it done by uh, this week, but it's still, we're still, it's a lot of work. I also approved five more scripts, and I'm just doing it by faith. They said, the animation company said, we've never done this, but Hank, we just love Captain Zepto, and we feel God on it. And so I went ahead and... So we're going to do five more, and we're just going to keep going. But here's what I want you to do on Amazon. You don't have to be an Amazon purchaser to put a review. And that only has four people that responded that that's a great book. And, and this hurts my heart. I work very hard for God. I work very hard for children. And I don't want people who don't know about Captain Zepto to think, oh, that book stinks and only has four people. Yeah. So go out there to Captain Zepto. Go out there to Mutsby and Milo. Go out to our books for adults and put great reviews on there uh, and, and really let people know that God is producing great quality stuff. Would you do that for me? Yeah. All right. God bless you. Let's open our Bibles to uh, Psalm 65, and let's look at verse 11. We kind of touched on this uh, last night, but I want to share it with you some more, and I just want to kind of rock and roll for just a little bit uh, of time. How many of you are rock and rollers, man? I'm a rock and roller. I, I, I don't know. I just love the sound of rock and roll. If you think that some people, you know, they say, oh, that's not Christian. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> Listen, there was rock and roll on the resurrection. That rock just rolled, man. Don't, don't tell them, you know. I think the angel showed up. You know, this is my interpretation. You know, they showed up. They had, you know, electric guitars and they jumped and they had drums and that's just my interpretation that's the way I see the Bible all right oh hey talking about seeing how you see the Bible I wrote a, a modern day according to Hank uh, kind of um, uh, Samson and Delilah story can they put that up real quick this is coming out we're illustrating it right now it's called the great Z eclipse and her name is Z L-I-E, Z, Lila, because she, and that's Granny Z, and she calls him Zamson, and she wants to know the secret of his success. Is it in his hair? So, you know, you, you, you all are tired. It, this is a great book. All right, let's go on. All right, let's go on. <laughs> let's go on. All right, look, look at Psalm 65, verse 11. We're going to read out of the King James Version. Notice what it says. You crown the year with what? Goodness. All You need to circle the year. Whether it's 5783, you're going by the Jewish calendar, or like Brenda said, the Gregorian calendar, that today is J1. God has surrounded the year with goodness. It's not just a one-time thing. God is looking specifically because of the harshness of what we have been through. God has had enough. 
And he is, uh, I'm telling you, he is in a good mood to lavish us with his love and with his blessing. And I'm telling you, we need to connect our faith to what he is wanting and what he is saying. Amen. Just anyone that says, I sure hope so, you just disqualify yourself. Well, I've heard that before. You just disqualified yourself. I'll take your blessing. You crown the year, the whole year with what? Goodness. And watch this. Thy paths drop fatness. Come on, all of you who are looking for dieting, there is your scripture. Come on. Psalm 65, 11, fatness is going to begin to drop. But I noticed something this morning as I was reading over my scriptures here. Notice, though, you're going to have to, how many of you uh, have ever done steps? You track your steps? Look at the scripture. Thy steps drop fatness. So you're going to have to do some steps. <laughs> you're going to drop fatness. And those steps are going to be have to uh, following God, following his plan, following his will for your life. And when you do that, you're just going to drop fatness. All right? You are a hard crowd this morning. Normally you're just like, ah! Okay. Somebody just go, ah! Just so that I know. Okay, okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. Now look at the new, the new living trend. You scared us. Okay, no. Look at New Living Translation. I don't live in fear. Are you kidding? All right. Look at this. You crown. I like this translation. You crown the year, like Pastor Brenda said, with a what kind of harvest? A bountiful harvest. Now, come on. How many of you, you have been speaking right? How many of you, you have turned off the news and you are... You are listening to God. You are, you are praying. You are standing in faith. How many of you are tithing and you're giving offerings? Come on. Then because you have sowed, now is the hour. Just like with Isaac who could sow in a time of famine. And in the same year, the same year when it's supposed to be ugly, nasty, inflation, all kinds of stuff that they say, somehow like Isaac in the same year, you will reap a bountiful harvest. Isaac reaped a thousandfold return. God is saying this year, come on, you are going to reap a bountiful harvest. That's powerful. Now why? Because God is not just wanting to bless you. He's acknowledging, watch this, that there have been hard pathways. There have been things done to innocent people. I was pacing the floor all this last week saying, God, you got to speak to us. Your heart demands a voice. God, I'm not the only voice, but speak to us. Oh, God, let the people hear from you. And not only that, Father, the people have suffered so much. I pray for you every day. And I call out to God on your behalf. Because listen, it's been hard. But look what the scripture says. There are three things that are going to identify what God is going to do and in the process of doing. I don't always like to say going to do. No, he's in the process of doing this. Watch this. God, because of the hard pathways, he's going to, number one, cause you to see visibly a manifestation of all the hard years of toiling and hardship. There's, this is a year, I believe, of reward. It's a year that you're going to see some things. You know, Teresa said something, your wife saw it. She said, it feels good to be part of a, of a church where you give into a building program and you actually see the building go up. Well, you know what? Don't just rejoice for that we got a, a great looking church going up. But if God's doing it for the church and you're part of helping another man's dream, come on, it's the, it's the Joseph principle. Joseph in the Bible helped to make other people's dreams understood, and God didn't forget him because of it. And when you help out the kingdom of God, God doesn't forget. So if God's going to see to it that this becomes a reality, he's going to make sure that if you're part of making that happen, that you then will have something that, that you're believing for to establish or to be manifest in your life. It'll happen. I believe that with all my heart. It's not just about our building. It's about God doing something in your life. So the number one thing is you will see 
God's goodness. And in that goodness, you're going to see a harvest. You're going to see a manifestation. Come on, some of you have been believing for a spouse. Some of you have been believing for health in your body. You've been believing for prodigals to return. You've been believing for a new job. You've been believing for your business to go to another level. I believe that this is the year. that Let it be. Bountiful harvest. And it's not, you know what, listen to the words. You know why you know it's going to be a bountiful harvest in the year of goodness? Keep reading the scripture. It says in this verse, watch this. Not only is there going to be a bountiful harvest. You know what a bountiful means? It means it is so amazing, so big, so much. Come on. I mean, I'm looking at my own life here, and I'm going, okay, God, we're getting the plaza. We're getting a little building. We're getting, we're getting a new a, a new sanctuary. Oh, my gosh, Lord. A, a, a video series start with Captain Zepto. God, what a bountiful harvest. And, it, and I can tell you other stuff. It's just amazing. But notice that's because the next thing that you read. It says that your pathways, because they've been hard, watch this next word, overflow. Come on. Now, let me ask you a question. All right. We want to keep the bathroom out of it, but let's just bring a bathroom point. How many of you ever had a nasty toilet overflow? It is so overwhelming. Do you see that example? I know I shouldn't have said that. You're all flushed. Now, now, now listen. So let me give you another example. So one year, one of my ships decided, you remember when uh, Chuck Pierce prophesied that we'd have a 90 mile an hour wind in Omaha? Well, we had it. Remember that strange wind that happened? And, and so that night of all nights that Chuck Pierce prophesied, my female ship decided, we have two female ships, but this one decided that they had to go to the bathroom. I'm like, no. They went outside, and there is stuff flying over my head. I mean, tree branches. I'm like, come on, get done. And they're just looking, you know, taking their time. They have to sniff to decide where they want to go. I'm like, come on. Get, 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 get just do it. And all of a sudden, where they chose... I looked, and all of a sudden, I realized that my drain pipe was disconnected from my gutter. Thank you. You must know my message. And so water started backing up, and guess where it was heading? In the basement. In the basement. And it was heading right in a window well. And it was overflowing, and it was overwhelming. And you know what was amazing is it was fun. And you know what I did? I almost got it, got it on video because right underneath where the water was coming in is my train layout. Aww. Yeah, but this is the cool part. The water was coming down the wall through the window, and I have two bridges and a water scene, and it was like a waterfall, and it looked like real water. I was like, whoa, God, this is amazing. <laughs> Remember that, Brenda? And I'm not thinking of all the electrical wires and all the things that I got, you know. But it didn't do any damage because God's good. And, but my point is, I'm not sure. But my point is the overwhelming feeling of overflow. Come on, man. When God just lavishes you and pours on the blessings, it can be overwhelming. I remember one time uh, the Lord said to me, he said, Hank, I want you to do something for me. I said, okay, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to pray in the spirit. He said, he said, you can have your regular devotions, but then after that, he said, I want you throughout the day just increase the amount of, of your praying in tongues. And I did, man. I, I prayed in tongues. About six months later went by, and all heaven broke loose. I mean, Brenda, you remember, I said, man, Brenda, as things are just breaking loose on every side, things that I've been waiting for, things that I've been believing for. Come on. How many of you, if you would just pray in tongues over what you've been believing for? And, and I said, God, what is going on? I can't take it. This overflowing blessing, it's overwhelming. And God said, you remember six months ago when I told you to keep praying all the time in tongues? I said, yes. He said, you foreran this. <laughs> Do you understand? This is what we've come into now. This is how things are shifting in this decade. So notice, a bountiful harvest. See, I'll take that. 
Amen. Number two, overflow. Overflow. We're going to see it in this church. Overflow. More overflow. Amen. And don't ever think if you're coming to this church and you think it's hard to find a seat. Because, you know, this isn't reflective of it, but most Sundays it's hard to find a seat. The 85% rule is a man-made statistic. Because in the Bible, Jesus didn't have no 85% rule. They came into his house and they tore the roof off. Just, you know, we've got insurance. Just uh, tell us ahead of time if you want to come through the roof. Just, just tell, We also have security. We have snipers and <laughs> helicopter landing pads and, uh, and all that. But the third thing is, besides a bountiful harvest, you have, watch this, overflow. But the third thing, this is so, oh, yes, abundance. Someone say abundance. abundance. Come on, you've had an abundance of harshness. Come on, forced vaccinations, forced mandates, forced closures, forced masking. Man, I was in a place the other day, and I know that somebody that was there, you, you, you say you watch, and, and you'll know that I'm telling the truth. So this dude went in. I was in a waiting room, and this dude came in, and they started asking questions, and the first thing he said is he said, hey, I'm not answering those questions. I'm like, okay, what's this dude doing, man? He goes, I'm not answering questions whether I'm a male or female. I'm a man. And I'm not answering that other question on how do you identify yourself or see yourself. I'm a man. And everybody else here sees me as a man. And that's a man. That's a woman. That's a man. And, and people started clapping him. And I said, way to take back America. <laughs> so what's my point? Oh, abundant. Okay, so we've had enough of this. <laughs> you got to help me preach. I didn't get but like two hours of sleep. This is what happens when you don't get sleep. Uh, you're, you preach like this. <laughs> okay. I feel like messing up my hair because that's how I feel. No, you don't do that. I don't think that. I don't think that would be. I don't think that would be good. I don't think that would be good. So, but anyway, here's the point. The point is. We've had an abundance of the other garbage. We've had an abundance of the other stuff they've tried to push at us. Well, why can't we have an abundance of what God wants to do? Because we've had enough of their stuff. We've had enough of their garbage. We've had enough of this abundant redefining of pronouns. You can't even say the word that you are brave anymore. Because you're considered a savage. You can't even say you can kill two birds with one stone because that's animal cruelty. Oh my gosh, I just, oh my gosh, poor animals, I just, I can't say that. Really, are you that? Don't let people make you redefine and change all the pronouns so that they feel better. You know, here's the, here's the latest one. We need to, so I was talking to some people, you might be watching too. And their pastor just identified to the fact that they are a church that accepts everyone. And then they went and started saying the next thing. That you, if you identify as a certain way, we accept you. Now, here's the thing. We in this church accept every human being. You're a human being. We accept you. You're welcome here. But what we don't accept is lifestyles that go against moral decency, the moral code of conduct. We accept you if you're a liar, but you're not going to stay lying. We accept you if you're an adulterer, but you're not going to commit it here anymore. We accept you if you're a homosexual, but we're going to command you to repent just like we command the liar, the fornicator, come on, the stealer. The gossiper, if we are to just accept everybody, now we are to accept them as human beings and treat people in the love of God, but you are to speak the love of God or speak the truth in love. We are to accept them. Sure, the church is to be accepting of people, of human beings in all conditions, but we are not to allow people to stay in those conditions if it violates scripture otherwise if we are to accept everybody and you can stay as you are because we accept you and if we say anything we're judging you no Jesus said you can judge 
He said you can judge the trees. You can judge people by their fruit, their lifestyles, their actions, their words, their choices. And you can say that is a bad fruit. That's a bad tree. Stay away from it. If we accept, have this acceptance, if we have this acceptance mentality, then here's what's going to happen to repentance. You won't find it. We are demanded and commanded of Scripture to repent. So we accept you, but you need to repent. All of us. And live a repentive lifestyle. That's true acceptance. Thank you. Thank you, the one guy that stood up. Thank you, I applaud you, I accept you. Are we clear? Are we clear? <laughs> Are we clear? <laughs> okay. All right. Got that off my chest. I'm going to start not getting sleep on Saturday nights. Now, here we go. We have seen evil. We have seen darkness, lies, misinformation. Now we're going to see God's goodness. Look at Psalm 27, verse 13. David reached a place where he was like seeing all of the evil, that he finally said, God, come on, man. I would have given up. I feel like giving up. But notice what he said. I would have fainted unless I brought myself to remembrance to see the goodness of the Lord in a jacked-up culture. The HTL. Hank's translation. All right? I have a few of those translations too. What would have happened if he wouldn't have seen God's goodness or believed or put himself in remembrance? He would have gone down the same road like a lot of Christians. Oh, it's never going to get any better. Let's just label this the end times because that answers all questions. There's an Antichrist, there's a Mark. And there's hell on every side. God, get us out of here. Well, Matthew 24, verse 14 says, the good news of the gospel has to be preached and promoted as a witness, and then the end will come. So I don't know what you're, what you're talking about. You're looking to the beast and Antichrist, and you can't take your kid to Chuck E. Cheese because they put a mark on their hand that glows in the dark. Might be the, the mark. I don't think it's going to be like that. I didn't know, God. I thought I took my kid for pizza. I don't think it's going to be like that. But people are looking for that stuff, looking to store away and live in fear with beans and rice and no beano. That doesn't make sense. A gas X. I'm looking for God. I'm looking for his goodness. I have to wake you up so I have to preach this way, man. I, I'm serious. People stop me. Pastor Hank, you preach. Very interesting. And I say to him, it's because of these people. Okay, look, otherwise, I'm just a nice guy. Just, you know, a nice guy. Okay. Yeah, I am going to blame it on you. There you go. Now watch this. Look at Deuteronomy 6, verse 23. Let's put up verse 23 for 2023. 20, what did God say? God said very clearly, He is the one that is bringing us out from what? There. And I thought that was profound what God said about 22, 2, 2, a balance. But notice what the three does. And where is the three position in the number? To the, oh, okay, I just got that too. Yeah, yeah. Towards righteousness. Now, watch this. God's bringing us out from there that he might do what? Bring us in. In other words, to bring us into blessings. So don't keep rehearsing what was. You can identify it, but start saying, man, God, I'm expecting goodness and mercy. Now, watch this. Deuteronomy 11, verse 12. I want to show you this scripture. Because people think, well, you know, God has forsaken America. The land is cursed, they say. But does God care about land? Does God care? Look at what he says. 
He's talking about Israel, but I believe he's speaking this over the earth right now. Remember, the, Lord, the earth is the Lord's. God so loved the world, I think it's not just people, but I think it's, it's what he created. He loved because he called it good every day. And he, didn't, he called things good before he ever made man. And it was the earth that he was calling good. He loves this earth. Are you listening? A land which the Lord thy God cares for. And the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it. From the beginning of the year, even until the end. I believe God is going to watch over this land. That his eyes are going to care for America and whatever nation you're watching. From the beginning, starting now, or the Jewish New Year, whatever you look to, until the end of the next cycle. I believe there's a shift that has taken place. Here's why. Now let's keep reading. Let's keep going. All right, look at 2 Chronicles 15, verse 15. Is it possible for God to give a people and a land rest? Yes, it is. And there's a couple components that made it happen. Because I want you to understand that this rest is for you as a people, but it's also what I see God bringing our nation. And we are in a, we're in a process of, 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 of unraveling, a process of exposure that will lead to uh, a reset, which will lead to restoration, okay? That's why you don't put all your eggs in one month, one day. Don't set dates. Just realize that we're in a process. Things are going to continue to unravel, Okay? Pastor didn't say everything's going to happen this year. I didn't say that. I'm just telling you there's a freedom. You're going to see it, and you're going to see more and more of it. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they swore it. Watch this wholeheartedly. Now, here's the key. How is God delivering America? I believe he's doing it by a few. You know why? Because we're in the middle of a revolution. We're in the middle of a revolution of light that God prophesied ahead of time. Remember that? It's a spiritual war. Do you know that our revolutionary war that was fought for almost 10 years, less than 10% of the 3 million population at the time fought. It was not the masses that took and gave us our independence in our revolution. It was less than 10%. God once again is delivering this nation not by the masses, Certainly not by the masses of evangelicals. Because they, they will call you all kinds of names if you stand up for God and country. But it's going to be about the few who are going to go wholeheartedly after God to bless this land. That seek God eagerly. And he was found by them. So the Lord gave what? Them rest on every side. Now watch this one. Judges 3, 9 through 11. This is very powerful. Now, if I don't pronounce these names right, I can barely pronounce yours. So just bear with me. <laughs> I used to do baby dedication names. You know, I used to call out all the names. And they would even spell it out. And I would still get it wrong. I don't know why. It's just, it's a grace, right? And so I quit doing that because I didn't want to offend someone on a baby dedication. Bob. B-O-B. And I would call it Bob. <laughs> I'm trying to wake you up. <laughs> but when the people of Israel, what did they do? They cried out to the Lord for what? The Lord raised up a what? A rescuer. Okay? And the rescuer had to be somebody who could govern over them or a form of government. God does raise up deliverers and rescuers that have to do with government and political oversight. Are you listening? To save them. I believe that's why they hate 45. They came out with his tax reports, and they again found nothing. Collusion, no collusion, no Russia. Come on. I mean, when's it going to end? And, and you and some ignorant evangelicals and Christians can't see. They now want to shift it. Well, we're just going to shift it to the other guy down in Florida. And you can't see that God raised up a rescuer, a deliverer. 
I don't know anybody else in the earth that they go after more than that dude. Because, not because he's great or he does everything right or we agree on every point, but you have to look past your ignorance and see the anointing is upon someone as a rescuer, as a deliverer. No, they're not our savior. They're a deliverer for God. Now watch what happens. But God, his name was, what's his name? Othniel, Othniel. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Othniel, <laughs> the son of Caleb's younger brother. What's that name? Kansas. Now, look at verse 10. <laughs> Help me, God. <laughs> the Spirit of the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he became Israel's judge, and he went to war against King. Whoa! He went against King Longname of Aram, and the Lord gave what? Othniel victory over them. So when God raises up a rescuer, a deliverer that he has chosen, it's to save a nation and a people and to do what? Give them victory. But notice what happened to the land. There was peace in the land. This is where we are heading. We, why do you think they have to manipulate the votes? Because the devil knows if you get a rescuer, a deliverer who has a supernatural anointing upon them, they don't have to be Christian to be anointed or Cyrus would have been a God-fearing figure and he wasn't, but he was anointed. Inconceivable. Isaiah 45. Why do you think they manipulate it? Why do you think that they've lied with Carrie Lake? And different people like her and Herschel Walker. Because they don't want people who will save this country. Because if we get the right people, which we are heading towards that, we're in a new era, you will have something released over your nation called rest, peace. They called 45 a warmonger, and yet there was peace under his reign. He went over to Kim Jong Ding Dong and literally brought that guy to shut his mouth. Are y'all here? <laughs> Isaiah 42, verse 9. Let's just kind of keep going here, okay? If you are visiting with us today. God loves you. We love you. And Jesus is Lord. All right, look here. Behold, former things, they're done. They're finished. But new things I declare, and before they spring forth, what am I going to do? I'm going to tell you. Now, look at what it says in the New Living Translation. This is even more powerful. Because this is what God is saying about the new. Everything I've prophesied has come true. That is what God is trying to enunciate. He's trying to let us know there's things that have been prophesied and they will come true. And it will be considered then a former season. And then, guess what? God's not going to stop prophesying because he set them in the church. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Ephesians 4, 11. Jesus set the prophets Amen. as he saw fit. And now he says, I'm going to prophesy again. You know why they attack prophets? To get you to shut up so you don't reveal God's heart. So people believe the narratives of the culture or of the land. But I'll tell you the future before what? Before it happens. So there's new things happening. We're going to see prophecies fulfilled. Now, let me show you this. Let's keep going. I'm going to just like wrap this up like in like 10 minutes, and I'm going to just like throw stuff out, all right? Look at Numbers. Okay, thank you. Numbers 14. Look at verse 22. And what I appreciated by that, okay, was it was like, okay. It was like, okay. You're like, they're hungry. Yes, you're hungry. I'm totally hungry. Now, watch your words this year. 
How many of you have said it? I said this last night. People say, well, you know, God keeps score. Well, he does. And he keeps score on, on your attitude. He keeps score regarding how you talk because either he and his angels can operate on your behalf and for you or you release satanic forces and it's all based on words. Do you know that? Watch this. Because all the men which have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness have tempted me now these ten times. So how many times did they complain? How many times did they murmur? Ten times. God marked it down. Now, look at verse 29. I believe it's 29. Watch what it says about uh, Caleb, though. It says, Caleb, I believe it's verse 29. Is it? No, maybe it's 30, 31. Okay. Uh, it says that uh, maybe it's four verses. Maybe it's 24. If you can look at it. But it says, Caleb had a different spirit. Which verse? Is that 24? That's what I thought. 24. I was just testing you guys today. <laughs> but my servant, Caleb. Because he had another spirit or a different spirit in him. What made Caleb have a different spirit? You know what it was? He didn't go by the media. The media was reporting there was giants in the land. The media was saying, oh my gosh, if you go into these Canaanites, or you Philistines, you go into this land, you're going to get wiped out. And that was the report. But you know what? He didn't listen to the news report. And he kept his mouth right and God marked it as a man with a different spirit. And the others who talked wrong, who complained all the time, like people who say, well, I sure hope so. Yeah. And, and then they say, oh, yeah, 2020 free. And then they list off all the things that are going to be bad and are bad and won't change. Well, you don't have a different spirit. If you want the goodness of God this year, you're going to have to talk right. And you're going to have to come into agreement with what God said. And you're going to have to either be the ones that don't ever enter into your promise so you will never see the goodness that God promised you just like those people never saw their promised land. Or you can choose to have a different spirit like Caleb saying, you know what? I don't care what they're saying. I don't care what the news says. I don't care what they're trying to do to our country. They won't win. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Now watch this. All right, so let's establish this. Now let's talk about this. Put Psalm 65, verse 11. We're going to close. Pastor Doug's going to start move. He's going to start moving this direction. Move, move, move. Come on, move this direction. He's going to come. They're going to get ready to play on the piano in just a minute here. Psalm 65, 11. Let's go back to it. Watch what it says. You, God, crown the year with what? So now look at that word crown. For those of you taking notes, it's the Hebrew word atar. Okay, it's where they got Atari. Because you're to surround yourself with video games, right? That's what we thought when they first came out. That was a really dumb joke. Just let that one go. But, yeah, thanks, honey. I heard that. So crown means to surround. So you can read it this way. You surround this year with goodness. Now look at Psalm 8, verse 5. Now what does God, how, how does he surround you? Psalm 8, verse 5 says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Or actually, the translation, true translation, is you've made him a little lower than Elohim, God himself. Amen. And you've crowned Man, watch this, with glory and with favor or honor. So one of the ways that God uh, will release goodness will come by his spirit, by his anointing. Okay? So how many understand that? That presence, God's presence upon you, around you, surrounding you. Look at Psalm 5, verse 12. Here, here's the same word. For Lord, you will bless the righteous. And with favor, you shall crown him or you shall surround him as with the shield. So do you understand if God is declaring that you and I and those of you that are watching have been crowned or surrounded this year with goodness, it's like what that verse says. It's a shield. It's a protection. And part of what also works for you is it's also favor. When God puts favor on you, he takes you from the tail and makes you the head. Amen. He takes you from below and makes you above. He puts your name at the top of the list. He passes over countless names 
and blesses you. And by the way, do you know you need to claim your Abrahamic covenant that Jesus made available? Galatians 3, cursed is every man. Galatians 3, 13 and 14, cursed is every man that hangs on the tree. And then it says, Jesus was made the curse so that the blessings of Abraham or the covenant that God made with Abraham may come upon you through Jesus Christ. Part of the blessings of Abraham, listen to me businessmen, was Genesis 12. And in the Amplified Version, God says this. He says, Abraham, I am cutting a covenant with you. And I will cause your name to be famous. Come on, wouldn't you want the name of your business to be known? That's part of the Abrahamic covenant. Okay, you know what God's done with this ministry? He's made my name known. That's part of my covenant. Then it says you will increase with, uh, uh, no, you will have an abundant, let me quote it right, you will have an abundant increase of favors. That's part of your Abrahamic covenant. That everywhere you go, you have an abundant increase of favor. Come on. Amen. I'm going to watch God favor me this year, but I'm going to watch man favor me. Praise God. Now watch this. Look at Psalm 103. I want to show you this word again. This crown. So you're crowned. You're surrounded. You're protected. Come on. You have favor. Now, now watch this. Psalm 103. Look at, let's look at verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. That's why you got to get the right shoes. Uh, Doug, did you get that? You got it, I tell you. He slipped me that joke ahead of time, so I just wanted to acknowledge it. Bless the Lord, oh, I'm a cartoonist. Come on, I'm a children's writer. What do you think? Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that's within me. Watch this. Bless his holy name. And then he tells you something that is so imperative for your life. And when Brendan and I pray together in the mornings, I always bring my covenant benefits before God, and I claim them. And I claim them for you. Watch his benefits. Forget not his benefits. Here they are. Number one, he forgives you of all iniquities. You know what iniquity is? It didn't say sins there. It says iniquities. Iniquities are purposeful sin. He forgives you of all sin, which is what iniquity is, but he forgives you even of those purposeful ones. He heals you of what? All, all diseases. Not the one that you're the only one that has it. You ever been around people like that? They're the only one that ever had that temperature that high. It was 120 degrees. That's because you ran it under hot water for a long time and then put it in your mouth. Who he, okay, watch this. Who redeems? Okay, let me ask you a question. Watch this. How were you redeemed? How were you paid for your life, your Christian walk, your covenant? Through what? So Jesus' blood, this is a serious matter here. Jesus' blood is so holy, so power, powerful, and should be greatly honored and reverent. Rev, reverent? Reverent? Re, what is it? Reverenced. Jesus' blood should be reverenced. Why? It paid so that your life can be free from what? That word destruction is anything that's connected to to the curse. Sickness, poverty destroys, sickness destroys, tragedies, calamities, accidents, injuries. You don't ever have to experience any of those because bloodshed is your proof from the veins of the Messiah, Yeshua himself. Now watch, here comes that word crown. Not only does he through his blood, but now he's going to talk to you about his nature. He crowns. He surrounds. He preserves. That's what that means. He protects your life. It's part of the reason why no destruction can come near your dwelling. How does he do it? With his loving kindness. That's part of his goodness. And his tender mercies. Come on. When God says, my goodness will be your year, then you need to understand that there is a, there's a shield around you. There's a protection. Come on, this, this new release of a new variant. 
that'll just get more incredibly interesting the closer we get to the election season. Yeah. Right? Are you all here? Okay, okay, we're almost done, so you know you can be done with me and all that. So, all right, now watch this. I want to just show you. Uh, okay, now watch this. Let me show you one other last principle. When we declare Psalm 6511, we have to understand that there's something also that is important that you need to connect to, okay? And it's called the house of God. Look at Psalm 65, verse 4. This is the verses that proceed verse 11, okay, about the year of goodness. So you got to read sometimes the scriptures ahead of it so you understand. Psalm 65, verse 4, same chapter. Blessed is the man that you choose and you cause uh, and cause to approach you that he may dwell in your courts watch this the person will be satisfied with the goodness of your house i believe there's a separation going on between preachers right now of those who are going to lead in this new era and churches people are leaving churches like crazy because their pastor has gone woke right so here's the thing. There is goodness in the house of God, your holy temple. Now watch this. Look at Psalm 36, verse 8. So staying connected to the house of God is very important, whether it's online, right? If you're a new person watching us online, man, stay connected. There's an anointing here. There's goodness here that will, that when you connect to it, it'll be activated in your life. Psalm 36, verse 8, watch this. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness or the goodness of thy house. Isn't that amazing? How many believe that? Yeah. So there's goodness in connecting to the house of God. What happened to the Shunammite woman? She connected to uh, her house to the anointing, to the prophet. And what happened? She got majorly blessed. So did he. And watch this. And you will make them drink of the river of thy pleasure or the rivers of thy goodness. So when you stay connected to the anointing, a good anointed church, a good anointed house of God, you're going to experience goodness at a whole nother level. Let's go to the last one, Psalm 92. Now, here's what I want to encourage you about. Don't just come to church and not become a member or don't get involved. Don't just be an online, you know, um, clicker. You know, well, that's kind of a boring message. I'll go to the next one. No, you need to find your online church, okay? And become a member, an online member. We're actually activating that, releasing that in January for those of you online officially. We've been talking about it. It's, it's going to be launched. Now watch this. Um, that's not the one. Psalm 92.13. Sorry about or 90, Yeah, Psalm 92.13. Trying to get done. Is that all right? Okay, now watch this. Those that be planted. It's not potted. Potted means you can pick yourself up and move. Right? I know about potted plants. My whole house is full of them, and I love it. I breathe so good in my home, Brenda. Complete oxygen. Is it oxygen or carbon monoxide? Which one? Oxygen. So much of that in my house that it's great. It's just, just great. Potted plants, you know, all that. Right. What are you laughing at? No, you know, just tell me later. All right. The, those that be planted in the house of the Lord. So, you know, you're members, you're connected. Do you know it is, it's connected to your lifespan? I don't know if I should become a member of that church or not. Well, you need to get connected to a good anointed one. Because when you plant yourself, you get involved, you become a member. Watch what happens to your life. You will flourish, number one, that's called blessings. And what will happen? Verse 14. You shall bring forth fruit when? In old age. So in other words, when you get planted in the house of God, it's connected to old age. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, Pastor Doug, would you come and end this? I'm done. I'm good. All right, praise God. Well, the only thing I've got to do today is eat, and then the Packers are on at 325. It's going to be a great day. All right. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Doug, so, would you come make sense of all yeah. this? For me? Thank you. Pastor Hank. I love you, Pastor Doug. Thank Pastor you. Keith leaned over to me during the message, and he says, you know, we need to keep Pastor Hank up late every Saturday night. <laughs> he did such a good job today.
<laughs> that was good. Give him a hand. Yeah. <laughs> and then here's, here, wait, wait. thank you. But here's what we need to do. If you, if, if you pray that, then you better be ready every uh, Sunday to back yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. All, All right, love team, you. If you can come up. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to ask our alder team to come up here if you would make your way up here quickly and we don't have a lot of time but if you need prayer today as you exit you want to come up and have someone agree with you over needs in your life our alder team is available here and willing and honored to pray with you and um, the other thing I want to mention you know there's no better start to the new year than making sure your life is right with Christ as you start the year. And if there's someone here and you say, Pastor Doug, I'm not 100% sure that I have that relationship with Jesus Christ and I need to make it right, I want to sail through 23 with victory, with abundance. God has a plan for everyone's life. You know, he told Jeremiah, I think in Jeremiah chapter 1, God said, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And he had a plan for Jeremiah's life. Well, he's no respecter of person. He has a plan for every person's life that's watching online and in this room. He knows what you're supposed to do. He has a plan. He can direct you. He can guide you. And who better to guide you than the creator of heaven and earth? Who would you want on your side? Do you want the devil on your side? Or do you want God on your side? Everyone bow your heads, if you would, in this room today. And I want to ask a question. Is there someone here and you say, Pastor Doug, I want you to pray for me because I'm not 100% sure that I would go to heaven if I left this earth. I'm not 100% sure that I've really been serving God and I want to make it right. I want to cement that today, January 1st, 2023. I want to make the decision that I'm going to serve Jesus. I don't want any doubt. I don't care what people think. It's more important to me to understand and know what God thinks and that he approves. We don't care what people think. People pass away, don't they? But God is eternal. That's who we answer to. We don't answer to peer pressure or the culture. We answer to God. So if there's someone here, I'm just going to ask you to be bold and just raise your hand right now if you want prayer. And you say, Pastor Doug, I want, I want to know 100% that I'm on my way to heaven. If you're watching online, you can do this right in your home. Is there anyone here under the sound of my voice? I just want to make sure. I'm giving you one more chance to raise your hand so that I can see it. Be bold if you're here. Okay, let's pray this together. Father, thank you for sending Jesus. You just repeat after me. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart and save me. Today, January 1st, 2023, and I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you that Jesus went to the cross. He died for me. He was buried and he rose again. Forgive me for any sin in my life and make me a new creature. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today for the first time you're in, that's a start. That's the only the beginning of that walk with Jesus. Make sure you spend time in prayer, study his word, find a church to connect with like Pastor was talking about and uh, build some relationships, and that'll be your, your walk with the Lord. One more thing that's very important that I need to tell you about, because we only have a few Sundays to get this taken care of. We have something that was in your, how many of you have a new bulletin for January? You got those either last night or this morning. It's called Winterfest at the Zoo. For those that are here in the local area, this is a time of fellowship for Lord of Hosts, and it includes a buffet meal, catered meal at the treetops restaurant at the zoo and it will include your admission to the scott aquarium that night so it'll be a great time of fellowship for the church um, it's only 24 dollars for an adult uh, 10 dollars for children between 3 and 12 and the reason i'm pushing it right now is because we only have a couple hundred tickets to sell for that and it's going to fill up they only have limited room so if you want some opportunities to fellowship and uh, get to meet some people, have a wonderful meal, go to the Scott Aquarium, it's a great deal. Go buy your tickets today at the Connect Center and uh, we'll make sure that you're on the list to go and uh, everything will be great. So don't forget, Wednesday night, midweek recharge, Flashpoint this Tuesday night at seven. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Go home and get some rest and we'll see you Wednesday night. Thank you.